You know, I left for a few hours to go run errands and have some lunch. I think the desk is messier than when I left. All right, so let me clean it up really quick and I'll be back. I sort of cleaned up and then I sort of made a mess again, but it's an intentional mess this time. Okay, so um, I made a mold and it's drying. Anyway, we're here with a video for our joy of sharing. We're gonna talk about color cues, tips and tricks on working with color, um, I don't know where at this moment of filming this where everybody else is going to take this. I am going to take it in a couple of different directions. So number one, I, uh, I was told by a teacher a long time ago, in order to break the rules, you should know what they are. Well, I don't necessarily think that applies with everything in life because sometimes their rules are there for a reason. It does apply to art. Um, and I'll explain what these are in just a minute. So I'm not going to get deep into like color theory and stuff. First of all, I'm not knowledgeable enough to be perfectly honest. I will tell you that it is worthwhile if you're going to start doing a lot of painting and playing with color and you really want to figure out maybe why your colors on certain projects aren't working well together to invest in a color wheel, maybe take an online course in color theory or at least a brief explanation of color theory. There's probably a free one here on YouTube. I, it wouldn't hurt to look it up and watch it. Maybe watch a few of them and get pe different people's opinions. Uh, I really find your basic color wheel super handy. So when I'm working on a project and say I've got a lot of blues in it and maybe some yellows and a purple, and I just can't figure out why it's not popping for me and why it's not working right, why the colors aren't blending or what it's missing, the color wheel is really handy for that. Why? You have all these little symbols in the middle. Let me go to a bigger one. How about this one? You see that one? Okay, so if you're wanting to create a painting and say it has the main, maybe, maybe it's a seascape, the main color on it is blue. Um, so the complementary color to blue is orange. So you probably want to use a little bit of orange in the painting somewhere. It'll make your blues pop. Maybe you want to use more, most of us want to use more than just two colors. So then you can go to a split complementary to the blue, which would be the yellow orange and the red orange. So an orange that's more on the red side and an orange that's more on the yellow side. And they would really pop with the blue. Maybe you want to do even more than that or go a little farther out, then you could add a red and a yellow to said blue. And those three colors would really go well together. It's not the red, yellow, and purple won't go, but it looks more balanced, I think, if you have the red in there. You also can um, use this to find a, a tetrad. I don't know what that means except maybe four. It must be a word for four. Anyway, um, to figure out if you put one square of the rectangle on the blue, then you see here that you can also use green, orange, and red with said blue. Now, these rules aren't set in stone. This is just a guide to help you balance your colors in your um, work. Um, tetrad is a combination of four colors on the wheel that are two sets of complements. To, uh, example, blue, or, blue and orange with red and green. Um, yeah, I was right. It's been a while since I looked at this. Split complementary is using any color uh, with the two colors on each side of its complement. So violet and yellow, for instance. Uh, triad is using three colors equally spaced from each other on the wheel. Example, orange, violet, and green. Uh, monochromatic color scheme is using any tint or tone or shade of just one color. So for example, blue, we'll go back to blue because I do use blue a lot. So you can create a painting with just shades of blue. Instead of putting other colors in there, just do shades of blue and create a really interesting monochromatic painting. Uh, an, an analogous is using colors adjacent to each other on the color wheel and usually using at least two but no more than five consecutive colors, meaning side by side, which I actually do a lot. Complementary is any two colors opposite. Um, so 
all of these color wheels basically have the same information. I'm not sure why I have so many of them, except that I think I kept taking classes and I kept getting color wheels. You don't need this many, you just need one uh, for reference. A lot of times too with paint when you're choosing colors, um, especially if you're gonna be buying new colors to complement paints that maybe you already own in your, in your stash of things, it's really helpful if you can get one of these color charts. These are actual swatches of gold and acrylic paints. So if I wanted to get a new tube of paint, we'll start there, and I already had, say, Quadochrome Magenta and Anthoquinone Blue, uh, and I was wondering if I needed to add Medium Magenta, I probably don't, because I bet you I could get that by taking this and adding some Titanium White to it. Um, you also, if you're out of a color, say, I don't know, Manganese Blue, you could see if you could mix it with other colors that you have in your stash of colors and maybe adding a little bit of green. You probably won't get the exact same color, but you might be able to get something as something that's pretty close. These color charts, I actually refer to these a lot more than I do the color wheels, especially when I'm looking to order new paints or even I'm at the store and buy new paints to increase my selection of colors or maybe replace a color that I've used up that you know, I wasn't super thrilled with, but I had it, so I used it. Maybe I want to replace it with something different. I do refer back to these charts a lot to try to make more of an informed decision. Um, and you usually can get these for free, either at paint uh, workshops. A lot of arts and crafts stores, especially in the spring and summer, will have um, lots of demos, art supply demos, paper, paint, and a lot of times they'll give you not only free samples, but color charts. The, some of the stores may have the color charts. Sometimes they cost a couple bucks. Often they don't cost anything. And a lot of the companies will send them to you if you go to their website. So if you have a favorite paint company, um, it doesn't hurt to email them and ask. They may charge you a couple bucks for postage, but I really enjoy having mine. All right, piece of paper, two brushes. Okay, we'll go back to these. So this is, and always has been, one of my favorite color combinations. These five colors. And then I have, and often do add, neon. That's my pop color. So if you go back to one of the color wheels, again, let's get a big one, because that little one's too little. It's not exactly following the rules on the color wheel because we've got a blue-green, right? We've got a yellow, although it's sort of a grayed out Naples yellow, which is close to the yellow-orange, but the yellow I pick is more yellow-yellow than it is yellow-orange. We have pink, which is a variation of red, which if you... <laughs> is is nowhere on here <laughs> on any of these shapes. It doesn't really fit. So if you do this one, you kind of are close to the yellow, but you're far away from the red. And then I do have a purple, which is here. And then I, I also add a green, which is not, again, is not anywhere. But I really like the combination of these colors. And I find often when I need to put a pop in a painting, a little bit of a neon. And sometimes it's a neon, most of the time it's neon orange, I will tell you. Not always, but most of the time it's a neon orange. We're gonna do a quick little painting. With, acry with acrylic paint, I do paint and watercolor too, but with acrylic paint, I often start with the darkest color and work my way lighter, but sometimes I don't. I think we're gonna just do a quick flower. These are matte acrylic paints from uh, Blick. These are Blick brand, Blick Art Supply. They're nice because when they dry, they dry matte and, and flat, and they're very easy to doodle over. They're also very creamy. Look at how smooth they go and how far that little bit of paint on that brush is going before I have to dip it again. They're very opaque and inexpensive. Now they do also dry fast, so that means that you don't have lots of blendability, which is something you know everybody likes with their paints generally, with their acrylics. Um, 
but if you really want your acrylic to last and be blendable, you probably need to um, add some slow dry medium to it. This is just a piece of, uh, this is a pad of newsprint paper from Muji. So I'm just gonna wipe my paint off. I'm gonna go in with the pink. And I'm gonna start from the center here of the circle that I made and work my way towards the shape I just made. I like the contrast between this bright pink shade and the sort of grayed out Naples yellowy, um, yellow orange shade. I've always liked these combination of colors um, from the time I first started doing mixed media. It's always been a favorite of mine. And when I get stuck for inspiration color wise, I, this, these, this is my fallback palette. The most important thing about painting and doing mixed media is you should enjoy what you're doing. So if you're not, you need to switch it up so that you are. I'm going to go to purple. How do you not just love those, those, just those three colors together? You can find inspiration for color combinations and palette, co palettes of colors in a lot of different places. Look up some inspiration photos on Pinterest. Go to your hardware store and pick up some of those color swatches where they have um, a picture and then they have all the pit all the paint colors they've picked out of that picture that they go that go well together that's a great place to start and the paint swatch thing is free okay we're gonna go with the blue next I think I often when working with paints in these kind of jars whether it's um, this paint, artist paint, or craft paint, work from the paint in the lid. It's a habit of mine. It might be a bad habit, but it's a habit. Um, I also tend to be an abstract impressionist type painter. I don't generally try to do realism often. Um, so to me, I'm not trying to be perfectly blended or smooth out the brush strokes or anything like that. Now you should also know how paint colors mix. So you should know that probably if you take these two colors and blend them together, you're gonna get brown. Um, so that's something you should play with and you should take a limited palette like this of no more than five colors and maybe even less than that and you should mix every one with every one. So you should take this pink and mix it with each one of these other four colors and maybe the neon orange. And then you should take the yellow and do the same thing so that you know which combinations of which, which colors are going to make which tones and shades that you're going to want to use in your painting. probably go back with the yellow. I'm barely, barely, barely touching the brush to the paper, by the way.
How do you not like that color combination? That's a quick, easy, uncomplicated. I know it's crazy, but I love the color combination. So now I'm gonna take actually my clean brush so I don't, we get as pure a color of this as possible. This is um, DecoArt, Americana, Neon, and Torrid Orange. There's lots of brands of fluorescent paint out there, but the craft brands are the easiest ones and cheapest ones to get hold of. Um, so I would just want to use this as a highlight to make it pop. Again, I'm, I'm barely touching the paper and you'll notice that I'm not reloading either. I'm gonna, this I am gonna move around just a little bit. The matte paint's almost dry, so the orange isn't really gonna blend with the colors underneath too much. But I want it to be blended and feathery just a little bit. And one of my favorite tricks of painting is just adding a pop of um, neon I didn't want. So, you know, we'll fix it. There we go. Now, the beautiful thing, like I said, about these matte paints is that you can easily draw and doodle on them, journal over them or something else, keep adding other paints to them. Um, but experimenting with something like this, an easy shape with a ex you know experimental or new to you color palette like this one is a great idea. And you know, experimenting with colors and shapes and designs and technique. Isn't that why we all started our journaling anyway? I don't know about you, but it's why I started. So that I had a place to safely practice new things and new techniques. So this month, I want you to go out. You can use this color palette. I will leave the exact colors in the description below. And you can use this palette or you can use one of your own choosing. You can uh, probably find color wheel downloads on the internet, probably on Pinterest or somewhere, um, or you can get one. Um, or you can just go and like I said, find a paint swatch. Hang on. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. These are from Lowe's um, and these are from Olympic brand paints. And they have a series of photos on one side Think of it as a mood board. And then they have pulled colors out of these photos and listed them on the right side. Now, you could find something like this. This is supposed to be inspiration, not an exact match. Take one that you're attracted to, any one. Take it to your stash of paints and think, okay, this is sort of a tealy blue green. So you may not have this exact shade, but pull a tealy blue green out of your stash that you have. This is a muddy um, sort of yellowy brown color. Pull something, um, it doesn't have to be this dark, either one of these, these dark, this dark, just in that sort of color family. Um, here's a cr dark cranberry color, an off white and a um, like a gray green. So just go to your stash of paints, find colors that are sort of in the same color family. Maybe the red that you find is not nearly that dark, but it is sort of the yellowy warm reds, but it's maybe lighter. Maybe it's almost an orange or maybe it's a pink, but it's a warm pink. Um, use that and just pick, use this for inspiration. Maybe the pictures over here inspire you to a completely different colorway. That's fine. Use these for inspiration for your color palette and play with them in your journals. I want to see what you do with this over in our joy of sharing. I want to see you experimenting with color, whether you're using the color wheel or not. And I want to see you playing and having fun and add those pops of neon. It's really a fun way to make your paintings pop. That's it for today. Don't forget to check out the video description for the relevant links, not only for the paint colors, but 
the link to Art Joy of Sharing. My link tree list of links is also down there, which if you click on it, you're gonna find a list of all the different places you can find me on the internet. You can follow my daily art practice over on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find my Facebook groups and the places you can support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups. Uh, my happy mail address is down there too. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And above all, go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.